Welcome to Ask Dave episode number 134. I'm here with Trevor, our Ask Dave editor, and we're going to answer some Ask Dave questions about antennas and tuners. So Trevor, what have we got? So Richard asks about his OCF dipole configuration. Okay, off-center fed dipole. Well, let's see. He has an off-center fed dipole and wants to know the best configuration. Says height's not a problem. He can get it up any height he wants. Well, I wish I could do that with my antennas, I'll tell you. Uh, he said he's thinking 50 feet. The optimum height for 40 meters would be 66 feet. 20 meters would be 33 feet. So 50 feet's probably a good compromise. Uh, you'll be a little bit high for some of the other bands, but uh, what that re does is result in a multi-layered vertical pattern, which is actually not a problem. You just hit different areas with that. Uh, should he put it in an inverted V or just straight at 50 feet? And the answer is straight at 50 feet if you can. If you can't, try the inverted V, but uh, go with straight uh, for your first approach. Okay. All right, so Brad, call sign W5FRQ. Uh, want some recommendations on attic antennas. Oh, attic antennas are always a problem because it uh, has to do with the shape of the uh, attic. Uh, I know the attic that we have here is kind of humped like this up over a uh, flying roof that we have. We have a, a peaked roof in our, our living room, so it's hard to put in any sort of an attic antenna. Uh, the attic antennas that uh, I've seen that seem to work best are just plain dipoles. The other one you might consider is the MFJ1788, which I think is the right number for their loop antenna, which is uh, um, an interesting antenna. I'm going to do some more testing on here fairly quickly. Uh, he's also considering a flagpole antenna from 05. Uh, that will probably end up being your best antenna if you can get lots of radials in. Go ahead and uh, put in uh, lots of radials uh, for that. Uh, I would recommend uh, just plain old dipoles if you can. Now, in the attic antenna, if you can't stretch it all the way out, stretch, you know, maybe this way and then zig part this way and zig part that way, whatever you need to do. It's more the total length that matters than the actual configuration it's in. All right. Brian, call sign K2BJP. Wants to know about an antenna's maximum power. Okay, the maximum power an antenna can handle is uh, limited strictly by the coax. Uh, if you're going to put a whole bunch of power, like 1500 watts, you want something like RG8 or um, LMR 400. If you're going to go with uh, two or 300 watts, maybe even 500 watts, you can probably do RG8X. Um, RG, uh, let's see, it would be LMR240. Oh, another one for the big antenna would be RG213 uh, will work also. Can a G5R fee dipole be bed with, uh, blah, blah, blah. we might edit that piece out. Can a G5RV dipole be fed with a linear amplifier and a what power? Uh, the answer is probably maximum power uh, that you can put out legally, which is 1500 watts PEP. And uh, it should handle it pretty well unless it's a really flimsy little antenna. There's no special components in a G5 RV other than wire. There's no coils. There's nothing in there that might limit the amount of power that you can use. So. All right. Richard asks about the shape of an antenna and the length of wire needed to cover all bands. Okay. We're talking here about a large horizontal loop, which is sometimes called a loop skywire. It's in the ARRL handbook. Uh, I had one for a while. I really didn't have it high enough. He says he uh, believes hor horizontal height shouldn't be a problem. He's trying 40 to 50 feet off the ground, which should probably do you well. I would recommend that you do a full wavelength at 80 meters for 80 meters. So that would be, uh, what, uh, let's see, 240 feet, something like that. Uh, check that out. Do 80 meters and then figure that all the way around. And then you feed it in one corner, best with ladder line, take that down to a tuner or to a ballon. 
I had put a ballon right at the antenna. I don't think that's the best place for it. Uh, try putting uh, the ballon uh, closer to the tuner. Uh, what should the sharp, uh, shape be? The shape should be, ideally, a circle. But how many of us can put up a circle? That would take an infinite number of supports, so I don't think we can do that. So square is a good shape. Uh, if that doesn't work, a rectangle, uh, whatever you can do, just try and get the maximum enclosed area is kind of what you're looking for. Doesn't even have to be a rectangle, it can be a pentagon or a, a heptagon or an octagon, whatever uh, you may want to do. Uh, but don't bring it back in on itself. Try and maximize the amount of area enclosed. All right, Fred Callsign KD9IGO wants to know about feedback on an 80 meter Skywire rectangular loop. Feedback. Okay, Let's see what we've got here. Okay, he's also doing a Skywire, 80 meter Skywire. It's up 43 feet and it's 280 feet long. And uh, now the feed line of 126 feet he's talking about should yield excellent matching numbers on 80, 40, and 20. That would be a half wavelength on 80. Now that's 126 electrical feet, so you have to take into account the velocity factor. So take that length and multiply it by 0.95 if you're using open wire line, um, by about 0.9 if you're using foam dielectric coax, uh, and about 0.66 if you're using solid polyethylene uh, coax. says he's planning on 100 feet of uh, window line. Uh, well, I'd do the 126 feet there before going to the current ballon. He wants a one-to-one -one current ballon. Uh, if you're going to do coax after that, you probably want um, see your window line is about 450 ohms. Your uh, coax is 50 ohms, so you want a nine-to-one ballon. Uh, that's 450 divided by 50, uh, a 9 to 1 ballon, uh, and it doesn't matter whether it's current or voltage because you're feeding a loop. Uh, the high quality coax to his shack's unbalanced tuner. The length of the coax once you go through that ballon really isn't going to matter very much. Um, I think that uh, you'd probably be better off with your 126 electrical feet of uh, window line to the ballon and then go ahead and run the coax the, uh, the rest of the way. He says the 100 feet of window line is a little annoying as I must loop it around a bit. We, you need to make that uh, path for the line be random. The problem with the window line is if you loop it back on itself or fold it or get it near things, it will affect the impedance and thus you could get uh, some kind of feedback there. Um, now, as far as EZ, NEC, and TLW, uh, the fact that you've been able to get this far in it puts you uh, either on par or ahead of me uh, on that in there. I think you've got a good antenna, and I think you will find that experimentation is the order of the day. Um, I can almost bet that after you make very, very careful measurements to match your model, it's not going to work, and you're going to have to do some adjustments and see what you can do from that. All right, what have we got here? Um, so Scott asks about an opinion on an antenna tester analyzer. Okay, he's trying to make the best antenna. Um, wants to listen to the railroad band from his house, okay, on his scanners. The railroad band is, is centered around 161 megahertz. Uh, sounds like a, we have a rail fan on our hands. Um, I also enjoy uh, the railroads and subscribe to Railfan Magazine for a while. Um, he has a nice J-Pole half-wave antenna for that. He was looking into an MFJ259C so he can perform all the tests on the COAC, etc. And then he asks if that unit is overkill for his needs. For a receiving antenna, it is overkill for your needs. I can just make that as a general statement. Uh, impedance matches, wire lengths, things like that are just not all that important on the receive side. It's on the transmit side where we've got significant amounts of power bouncing around and looking for a place to go. Now, will it help on receive? Yes, 
a little. Um, now, what I would do with that is that J-pole antenna at that frequency, you want a piece of coax that's maybe 20 feet long, 25 feet long, something like that. If you're going to do portable rail fanning, uh, take that J-pole with you, um, put it out uh, beside the car, mount it uh, on a pole so it's up a little bit, and then just run that straight to your scanner and you're going to be in good shape. Uh, I would not go with a longer piece of coax. The coax for that I would use something inexpensive, RG8X or even RG6, which uh, you can pick up at Home Depot. That's a cable TV antenna uh, cable. Uh, and it will probably work uh, very well. Another thing that you can do is build a little uh, mag mount, magnet mount vertical antenna for your roof. Uh, and then you can just leave the scanner in the car uh, while you do your rail fanning. So that would be uh, something that uh, I'd take a look at. An SWR meter will tell you nothing um, unless you have a transmitter. So you would need an analyzer. The MFJ 259C or 269C are outstanding uh, antenna analyzers, but it's, it's gross overkill uh, for your needs there, Scott. Send me some pictures of those uh, trains as they go by. Mel, uh, call sign KC3LAZ, also wants to know about uh, purchasing an antenna analyzer. He wants to know what suggestions you have. Um, well, frankly, the MFJ 259C um, uh, is an outstanding analyzer. It's not the top of the line. It doesn't graph things for you um, or any of that fancy sort of stuff. Uh, it won't do fancy diagrams, um, anything like that, but it is an outstanding analyzer. I have the 259B model. I've been using it for quite a number of years and have never had it let me down. Um, and that would be for HF work. Now, if you're going to go uh, up and you want to do lots of things at 2 meters and at 440, you might look at the 269C. Uh, there are other antennas out there. Comet has one. Uh, you can pay anything you want. Um, the general term for one of these things is what's called a network vector, a vector network analyzer, VNA, vector network analyzer, which will give you a great many numbers that won't really mean much in ham radio. Uh, the numbers that are important in ham radio, basically the SWR, is what you're really interested in. And it's nice to look at the actual impedance and the reactance to see uh, just what is actually going on in the antenna. But you can do all of that with the 259C. So, well, thank you for doing that. Uh, for those who don't know, Trevor is our Ask Dave. All the Ask Dave questions go to him. He spent quite a bit of time looking through the questions and pulling the ones out that uh, all go together. I think he did a great job. Uh, so uh, next time we get together, we'll have another Ask Day video and do a few more antenna questions. So Trevor, thank you. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at my MFJ1788 loop antenna. I have it mounted horizontally on my roof and I've had a problem with a piece of coax just haven't been able to get to it, but I promised it would be my next video, and so it shall be.